In this video, we will talk about independent sample t-test. An independent sample t-test, uh, many times we call it student t-test or two sample t-test. Okay, let's look at the example. In an observational cohort study of patients you know, who are admitted to ICU, we want to compare average total hospital cost between deceased patient and survived patient during hospitalization. As we learn in hypothesis testing video, and there are two hypotheses. One, we call it null hypothesis, and average total hospital cost in deceased patients are no different or equal to average total cost in survived patient during hospitalization. Okay? And alternative hypothesis, and two are the different. Okay? So we compute the p-value and try to use to reject this null hypothesis, okay? So we're hoping p-value is less than 0.05. And a t-test compare average. So x1 is average hospital cost in deceased patient. x2 is average hospital cost in survived patient. And null hypothesis is say these two are the same. And in fact, we want to show difference between these two are not the same. And t-test is compare difference between two average. Okay? So this is the formula of a t-test. Okay. So the numerator is average difference. Uh, so you compare average of total cost in disease, average of total cost in survived, and then you subtract one from the other. So that's the numerator. Okay. And denominator is, actually this is standard error of x1 minus x2. So what is the standard error? Standard error is showing accuracy of a mean estimate. So we want to have standard error a small, a smaller, okay? And then we want to have a difference and larger, therefore, and higher the t, okay? And that linearly convert to smaller p-value, okay? Higher t convert to smaller p-value. And in this video, I don't, uh, we don't go in detail of how to convert t to p, and now computer does it automatically, okay? So our goal is to have bigger difference and smaller standard error, okay? And standard error, we compute from data variation. So what is S? S is standard deviation. S1 is standard deviation of total hospital cost in deceased and SD is the same thing. SD of total hospital cost in survived patient. Okay. And there are actually two different ways to compute standard error of difference. Okay? So one is for unequal variances and other is for equal variances. So when we use this is um, if we consider standard deviation, the variation of the top of the hospital cost is different uh, between disease and survived patient in target population. What is the target population? Target population is a population where you want to generalize your findings, your study findings. So that's a large population. It's not really the population you get data. You get the sam data sampled from. Okay? So if you think of the large population, Okay, you're looking, and if you think variation of outcome is different, then you should be using this formula, okay? And if you think variations are the same, then you should be using this formula, okay? So that the difference comes from, okay? So if you think variations are difference, and in this case probably is a difference, right? Uh, <clears throat> because um, disease patient and hospital cost may be 
uh, much higher than survived patient, and then uh, data are more dispersed with a higher cost. Uh, and so if you believe that, you use this formula. Okay? And how you compute S1 uh, square, how you compute S1, you know that's average distance from each observation to the average, uh, which is X1, right? And then uh, you do square of that, and then you divide by sample size. N1 is a sample size of disease patient. Okay, and then you do the same uh, for survived patient, and then you add them up. And after you add them up, you take square of that. So that approximate uh, standard error of x1 bar minus x12, right? And then when you believe uh, variances are equal, then what you do, instead of directly use standard deviation from deceased and survived in this formula, you actually uh, use those and then compute pulled standard deviation. Okay, so what this, n is a sample size of deceased. Let's say you have 100 deceased patients and then 50 survived patient, and minus 1 is 99, and 2 minus 1 is 49, and then n2, n1 is 150 minus 2, okay? And then S1's, uh, S1 is, again, standard deviation of uh, total hospital cost in deceased patient, and you take square, and you do the same for survived, and this is really the weighted average of standard deviation um, of disease and survived patients. Okay, so that's what the pooled standard deviation means. And then you use this as to uh, compute in the formula. Okay, and so in the formula you are using the same S because you believe the variants are the same in the target population. So that, that the difference. In many statistical um, software, and how you judge which to use to compute the t-test is first, and you um, t-test automatically, automatically come with the, uh, another test called the Vivine's test, and which compare whether S1 is the same as S2. Okay, so if the Levine's test p-value is less than 0.05, and then we might consider S1 is different from S2, and therefore we use uh, t-test for unequal variances. But if the Levine's test, say, p is point, uh, greater than 0.05, and you might use t-test for equal variances. So when you use SAS data in uh, SBSS, and that's how you do Okay, so you first have to check P for Levine's test, comparing variances uh, between two groups, and if it's reject, and use unequal variance, if it doesn't reject equal variances. In the separate video, I show you how to conduct t-tests in R. So what R does is uh, this one. So what R doesn't provide equal variances, it provides unequal variances test. So, uh, which another name called a Welch, Welch, Welch's t-test. And Welch's t-test is valid even uh, when the variance are the equal. And so, for that reason, uh, I think R does not compute two different results. It's only compute one uh, t-test, which is for unequal variances. So here is a result of a uh, two-sample t-test in R. Okay? and it show the value of t. So t test convert to p value directly, okay? So when the absolute value of t is close to zero and a p value becomes close to one. So when the t, absolute value of t, so that means t can be negative and uh, goes larger and p value become close to zero. So in this case, t is minus 1.8695. It convert p-value of 0 0.026425, okay? 
And uh, by the way, this p-value is two-sided p-value. And we always uh, have to use two-sided p-value, so you can just use this p-value. Okay? And it, since this p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we don't reject. We don't reject the null hypothesis. And so we did not have enough evidence to show a host, total hostel costs are different between the two groups. Okay? So this is the average hostel cost in survived patient. And this is the average hospital cost in dollars in deceased patient. So although we see the difference, but that difference didn't reach statistical significance. And that's how you interpret the result. Okay? And this is a graphical presentation. Uh, so this value is the same as this $46,000 dollars. And this value is same as this, $61,000. And then you have a confidence interval. And the confidence interval is well overlapped. So that also indicates non-significance of p-value. In fact, confidence interval can be slightly overlapped. And then many times that still show uh, p-value of 0.05. So the judgment is not really crisp. Clean. <laughs> so slight overlap can still reach 0.05, p less than 0.05, but in this case I would see overlap is much larger uh, than marginal, so um, this link to the non-significant p-value. Okay, And t-test requires assumption. t-test is a parametric test. What does it mean, parametric test? Parametric tests require certain shape in data uh, distribution, and which require normality. Okay. So uh, when you look at the distribution of data histogram among uh, diseased, this is important to look at data differently within the group. You don't combine the two groups. And then uh, you draw Y, total hospital cost, and then both have to be normally distributed. So that's the assumption of a t-test. Okay? And uh, here, variance of outcome variable is equal. Well, we are using a watch test, so variance can be unequal. So you don't have to worry about this. And all the observations are independent. That means you ca you cannot have more than one observation coming from one patient. So if you you repeatedly measure data, so two more than two one observation, two or three or more observations are coming from the same patient, single patient. You can't use student t test. Okay, so make sure uh, you have. Normality assumption and independent assumption are being met. So in R, uh, actually the histogram in R, and you combine surviving disease together. So I didn't want to use it. So instead, I use box whiskers plot. Box whiskers plot, this middle value is a median value. And then this point is 75th percentile, and this point is 25th percentile. And then these are outlier. So by looking at this, and you can tell data are skewed to a small value, but then have a large uh, tail to the larger value, right? And in survived, and also in deceased. So median is uh, is not really falling in the middle. And then these whiskers are not symmetric. So this indicate data are skewed. So make sure you look at data separately for survived in deceased patient. And then, uh, therefore, in fact, using t-test in this form of data is wrong. So you can't use t-test. Really, what does it mean? You shouldn't be believing these people. Okay? If the data assumptions, if the test assumptions are not met, test could be invalid, so you should not be using a p-value result from such invalid test.